So all of this is concerning one course. It was a uh, combined fourth year and graduate level physics course, and it was called solid state physics, which is the area of my, one of the main areas of my research expertise. And when was it taught? And, and it was taught in the winter of 2008. And I want to insist on the fact that in all of this process, the university has admitted in writing that um, the material was taught, that they're not questioning that, that um, my expertise is largely sufficient, that um, um, you know, they're, they're not questioning my pedagogical method, they say, and the only principal allegation that they have is that these A pluses were attributed arbitrarily. So they're admitting that the material was covered, that all these subjects were done, and so on, uh, and, they've, and they've admitted that in writing. That's that's the allegation. So you'd argue that you didn't. You'd argue that you didn't assign A pluses arbitrarily. Of course, uh, I did not. There was nothing arbitrary about it. It is uh, in the context of a pedagogical method, and it, I explained it very clearly to students how how it worked and what it was about. Uh, there's nothing arbitrary about it. It's, it's based on uh, accepted research pedagogical method. I mean, all, all the education experts are unanimous in, in stating that grades are counterproductive, that we don't learn through the traditional methods, that the, the, we, we don't take in the concepts that way, that it's all about obedience, and, uh, and, and that's what it's about. The, so the, the, there's no controversy when you talk to the experts. On, on this question of pedagogy. No, but if a student didn't show up over the course of the semester, would they still have an A plus? It didn't happen, and it, it couldn't easily happen because I was in uh, direct communication and uh, with the students all the time. So I, the, the approach that I use is very interactive and very, uh, one might say, in your face. Uh, and um, in fact, I asked the students to challenge me. I gave that space. I took away the the instrument of power, which is grades, that a professor normally has over the students in order to create that environment where um, the students could challenge the professor, could ask them to leave if they wanted to discuss something and so on. Uh, so it's, a, it's about democracy, it's about creating a space where you learn because you develop an intrinsic interest in the subject itself, not because you're going to be graded, you're not trying to guess the professor's mind. Um, and that's the environment that I was attempting to create. And this is, this is not controversial. Many, many professors do it throughout North America. There, there's an entire college in the United States that does not grade and has, hasn't graded since 1973, etc. So it, it's not a controversial technique. So there, there's nothing arbitrary about it. It was very uh, intended, it was, it was planned, it was me following my professional responsibilities to create that environment in the classroom. These A pluses, A pluses were attributed in several courses, not just this one course, right? I, 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 all A pluses were attributed in a graduate course the, 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 in the previous academic year, and in the same semester there was another course, a quantum mechanics fourth year course, in which all A pluses were also attributed by me. So um, all of these grades in all the courses have always been approved by the university. So they had all the same documents, all the same student complaints, all the same everything you want, and they approved these grades. They did not intervene and say, wait a minute, we have to look at this, etc. They, they approved this, and then, eight months later, uh, decided that it was uh, something that I needed to be dismissed over. Yes. Then you can ask, well, you know, why that one course? And it's because in that one course, um, three students wrote to the administration and expressed their frustrations about the course. And um, I think you have to understand that when you put forward a new way of doing things in a classroom, there are going to be a lot of frustrations. Students are used to the usual, are used to being graded, are used to being um, treated in a certain way within their program. There, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's a habit that's formed. And so there's a barrier there. Um, and we did discuss that with students and so on. And so these three students chose to express that to the administration express their frustration. Under due process, there is something called a formal teaching evaluation in which a committee of your peers comes in and looks at your pedagogical material, 
comes into the classroom and, and, and talks to the students, can interview students. There is a process which the university has completely brushed aside and instead has used a fast track mechanism uh, of the collective agreement in order to uh, dismiss me as soon as possible, basically. Yes, I was uh, suspended and escorted off campus on December 10th, the day that I was given a letter from the VP academic saying you're suspended and you're not allowed to set foot on campus. And on the same day, I was given at the same meeting a letter from the Dean of the Faculty of Science saying, I have recommended to the Board of Governors that you be dismissed as soon as possible. That's our plan. And then you attempted to return to campus when? And then I uh, returned to campus Oh, some weeks later to attend and host um, the uh, Ottawa Cinema Academica documentary film and discussion series that I created and that I've been running for many years. And uh, at that event, uh, I, I was arrested and taken away um, in handcuffs and brought to the police station under the charge of trespass. And what's happened with those charges? Um, I have a, uh, a court date is being determined now. Um, I will be uh, uh, my own counsel, and I will fight those charges. Um, the well, I guess I don't want to say what my legal defense is, but I, 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 it's fair to say that I have a very strong position. I can't imagine losing that case. But there were six uh, graduate students. Uh, and a, a postdoctoral fellow who were in my research group at the time of the suspension, and they have suffered significant consequences. Three of them in particular are suing the university over this question, it's been in the media somewhat. Um, they, uh, for, for, for those three, I am the world expert in the area that we're working on together. Uh, it, one of the areas, for example, is an area that I discovered, that uh, uh, an area of magnetism called superferromagnetism that I discovered back in 84, in which I'm a leader, and uh, in which we are proposing a novel uh, paradigm shift. And so we're not positioned to everyone else in the field, which I helped to initiate. And so I cannot be replaced easily in a case like that, in a case of research like that, unless you abandon that, that, that uh, avenue of research. Uh, I, I accept that responsibility. You know, I, I consider myself uh, a whistleblower, but I consider it that it's my responsibility as a professor and a citizen to uh, denounce everything that I see that I feel is not right. Uh, for example, on my blog, uofowatch.blogspot.com, I, I make it a point to describe all of the things that I can see that I'm directly involved with, that I know about, and I put the documents up on the web, and I expose these things. And so there have been lawsuits, threats from the university regarding that blog, and I was suspended for one day uh, over um, using copyrighted images from the university, that was the pretext that was given, um, uh, in, in building that blog. So um, that, that the critique of the university itself is one aspect of what I consider to be my work, my responsibility. Now normally a university professor has tenure exactly to protect them in situations like that. In fact, it goes even further than just tenure. We even have legal protection. There is a uh, an insurance policy that protects professors from libelous attacks and so on, uh, slap suits and so on, when you, when you express yourself as, as a university professor. Uh, this is not widely known, and I, in fact, just discovering that needed some work on, on my part and the part of others. But um, it's intended in society that we criticize society and that we criticize the institution itself that we're part of. That's our role, that's our job. So the real question is, why aren't my colleagues doing it? Why, why is nobody acting in such a way that would get them fired if they didn't have tenure? I think that's the real question. Yeah. How do you rate your chances at the board? Zero. The board is the board. And so if there's anything there, would you consider legal action afterwards? Um, I, I'm not in a position to pursue the university independently. I'm not allowed to. Um, it has to go through labor law. So it will be, I will ask my association to take on my case. They will make a decision as to whether or not they want to take my case on. If they do, and in all likelihood they will, then, um, then it will go through an arbitration process under labor law, and that can take several years. And so what are you going to do the, during those years? I don't know. I haven't thought about it. I guess I'll stop making trouble. I'll completely transform my personality and become someone else.
Yeah, right. <laughs> 